Hello, my dear friends. It's Poet WP here. Today is another Acknowledgement of Heroes video. Today, I want to share with you a couple of poems from one of my absolute favorite poets. Now, when it comes to favorites, <clears throat> I'm the type of person, it's, I have a lot of favorites, and it's very difficult for me to say, oh, he's my favorite, or they're my favorite, she's my favorite, whatever, you know. Because I love a lot of different poem, poets. Sylvia Plath, Pablo Neruda, basically all the beats. Jack, Corso, Cassidy, of course, Ginsburg. The Weight of the World is Love, Allen Ginsburg. Such a beautiful quote. I often repeat that quote to myself in life. William Blake, Rambo. Uh, the list goes on and on. I even I love Jim Morrison's poetry. A lot of, a lot of poet, a lot of all my poetry teachers and, and shit, man. They were always shitting all over Morrison's stuff. I love fucking Morrison's stuff. I love the Doors, and I can sing just like Jim Morrison. Actually, like you, it sound. I can sing on a good day when my voice is not hoarse. That's why I like to do karaoke, and I always do at least one door song. So sometimes I'll do all all door songs. I can sing like Jim for about four songs, and then my voice gives out. <laughs> uh, I always felt a real strong kinship with Jim Morrison. Big Doors fan, big rock and roll fan. Anyway, um. Yeah, and there's others. Let me turn around and look at my bookshelf to make sure. Of course, Charles Bukowski. Make sure I'm not forgetting anybody. E.E. E. Cummings. Yes, I can't forget E.E. E. Cummings. And there's others. There's many more. But E.E. E. Cummings, oh my God, I love E.E. E. Cummings. There's a, there's a beautiful video that's hard to find. I think it's called... Well, there's one called Poetry in Motion. It's about the beats. It's got a lot of great stuff. But then there's another one. I'll, in fact, I may post it, if I can. Old school VHS recording on a TV. <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling. On to Pablo Neruda. What the hell is the name of that? Anyway, there's an E.E. E. Cummings video. It's really, really good. Uh, where it's him reading poetry, and it's about 40 minutes long. I can't think of the name of it. Maybe I'll write it in the description below. Okay, anyway. On to Neruda. Now, Pablo Neruda writes some of the most beautiful poetry. And he's a Spanish language poet. And even when it translates over into English, it's amazing. In fact, I, I kind of want to learn to speak Spanish just so I can read read it in its original language. That's uh, And I'd like to learn to speak Spanish anyway. But I took two years in high school, but hell, I don't I, I can catch every, like, like, a quarter of a sentence, I understand. But... Anyway, I'm rambling again. But um, Neruda, Pablo Neruda, is definitely in my top three. And Bukowski is in there too. And it's hard, I don't know, I don't want, want to think about the third one. Uh, it's hard for me to choose, a, it's hard for me to make a list. Neruda is absolutely one of my favorites. And um, he... The tenderness and the depth of the, the richness of the heart and the romanticism in his poetry um, is akin to like Leonard Cohen, who is another brilliant poet and uh, musician. Leonard Cohen, go look up Leonard Cohen's music, it's breathtaking. So, anyway, Neruda, I'm going to read one, a couple of his poems. These are some of his books. Now, this is one I just happened to find in Walden Bookstore back when there was a Walden Bookstore in, hell, I don't know, 2002 or something. This is from my stomach's growling. This is from the movie The Postman. Uh, now, I've watched The Postman. I have it on VHS, actually, still. I have a lot of old VHS movies. Look at this. Yeah, but this is a little short chap-type book of, like, love-type poems, you know? Love. 
10 poems by Pablo Neruda. I love, this is a glorious book. And the quote on the back says it all for me. This has been the essence of my life for like, well, not anymore, but it was for a long goddamn time, for like at least a decade. Love is so short, forgetting is so long. From tonight, I can write. All right. I'm going to read you. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Leaning into the afternoons. Now, here it is in Spanish. You want to pause and read it if you read Spanish? Um, and here I will read it in English. Hold on, let me reposition so that my hand isn't covering the mic. Alrighty. There we go. <clears throat> I'll do my best, okay? I'm, hopefully I don't falter. Leaning into the afternoons. Leaning into the afternoons, I cast my sad nets toward your oceanic eyes. There in the highest blaze, my solitude lengthens its flame and flames, its arms turning like a drowning man's. I send out red signals across your absent eyes that wave like the sea or the beach by a lighthouse. You keep only darkness, my distant female. From your regard, sometimes the coast of dread emerges. Leaning into the afternoons, I fly, I fling my sad nets to that sea that is thrashed by your oceanic eyes. The birds of night peck at the first stars that flash like my soul when I love you. The night gallops on its shadowy mare, shedding blue tassels over the land. See, I can't write a poem that beautiful. It's just amazing to me. This whole book is excellent. Oh, Pablo Neruda is amazing. I'm gonna read you one of, the, one of his other, one of the other poems that I like a lot. This is probably my favorite book of Neruda's. Like this one right here, like this, this is a must-have as well. But and this one's more like essays and stuff, and like yeah, passions and impressions, and it's also very good. It's not necessarily it's not poetry. Uh, it's more prose, and um. This is like the complete works poetry. So, yeah. But this is um, probably my favorite volume of Neruda. Fully Empowered. I've read this lots of times. I love this book. Love it so much. Uh, I'm using a book marker. This is Mount Trimper. When I spent my month at Zen Mountain Monastery back in the day. They used to have, on the weekends, we would have weekends off. Right? So we could go into the local town of Woodstock. Near Mount Trimper. And, uh. One weekend, I didn't, like, go out into town or whatever with other people. And just, I just stayed at the monastery. And, uh. And just explored the nature. And I went and hiked up Mount Trimper or, or one of the surrounding I'm not sure if it was I hiked up a mountain around there it may have been Mount Trimper was it Mount Trimper or was it one of the surrounding I can't remember it was a big mountain I hiked up it uh not all the way just part of the way and I saw these I'll talk more about this in story time later I'll do a story time about my experience it was great it was great Anyways, I took a picture before I hiked into the wilderness for about two hours. Which I do. I'm a country boy. I grew up 
I grew up learning how to hunt, fish, live off the land, camp, trap, track. Country boy can survive. <laughs> anyway, don't want to get us started on some weird tangent. Uh, this one is called, It is Born. There it is in Spanish. I gotta learn to read Spanish. It is born. Here I came to the very edge with nothing at all needs saying. Where nothing at all needs saying. Everything is absorbed through weather and the sea. And the moon swam back, its rays all silvered and time and again, the darkness would be broken by the crash of a wave. And every day on the balcony of the sea, wings open, fire is born, and everything is blue again like morning. Yeah, I dig that one a lot. I stumbled over the words a little there, you know, sorry. I believe in first takes. Kind of like the philosophy of Kerouac. Kerouac, whatever he wrote first, and I don't always write, write like this and work like this. Sometimes I'll reshoot a video, but rarely. Sometimes I'll rewrite a poem, but rarely. I tend to lean in the Kerouac method where, boom, whatever it is first, even the mistakes, it's the way it should be. It's the right, exactly the way it should be, even with the mistakes, right? It's for a reason, right? It's kind of the way I look at it usually. But, uh, you know, like Allen Ginsberg, he, he, that was not his process or his method. He, he would rewrite poems over and over and over and over and over again sometimes. It's an interesting, uh, dichotomy, interesting, different way, uh, ways of doing things. Of course, Ginsberg and Kerouac were best friends. They had a little, a little gang of, of of artists and poets. I feel a little kinship with that beat generation. Anyway, I'm rambling again. Thank you for tuning in, and I uh, hope you can uh, dig what I'm laying down. You know, it comes from the heart. Okay, catch you later. <laughs>